rashes, skin lesions, irritating eyes, dizziness and vertigo. From Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, this spill covered 68,000 square miles. There was actually a very sophisticated cover-up of the health effects. And they're using that lack of information to now expand oil development to 95% of all U.S. waters. In 2010, a BP-operated oil rig exploded in the Gulf of Mexico, killing 11 people and spewing 795 million gallons of oil into the water. During the cleanup, the use of chemical dispersants caused severe health consequences that are still impacting people in the region. This new documentary uncovers the health crisis it caused. When you live in a small community of 4,000 people and there's a funeral every weekend, there's a problem. Oh no, it's not okay down here. I mean, you go to 22 funerals in 22 months? All these little kids running around down here that I know personally with rashes and upper respiratory problems and one was just diagnosed with a blood disorder. One little dude still got bald spots all over his head. We still got kids having nosebleeds on a regular basis. No, it's not okay. It's definitely not okay. What, baby? I'm not an educated woman by any means. If I can sit down and figure out within a few weeks that there's going to be medical repercussions, you know, come on, guys. I know what I'm dealing with now. See, then I was very naive. I thought, Oh, we have representatives that represent us and I can go to them and they're going to fix it. Bullshit. I sat down with a filmmaker and scientist who revealed the extent of this health crisis in the new documentary, The Cost of Silence, which premiered at Sundance. Describe what happens during the cleanup that that would create health effects. So a spill this size, they don't have the ability mechanically to clean it up. There were stories of beaches where they were just covering the oil with sand. So they started spraying the oil with chemicals called dispersants in massive volumes. It ended up being almost two million gallons. And we started getting calls about health. And they were across the region, people with health effects, uh, strange health effects, rashes, irritating eyes, coughs that wouldn't go away. Across four states with people all having the same symptoms. I saw this progression of from cold and flu-like symptoms to, wait, I've taken all these rounds of antibiotics, my doctor says this or that, it's not going away, leading me to believe that it was not biological causation, it was chemical. Now, the medical doctors down there were um, anticipating that they would see cancer clusters within 20 years. Well, the cancer clusters started within two. The Coast Guard and the federal government sprayed oil on oil to basically get the oil off the surface into the water column where it wouldn't be seen by the media. That's a so-called cleanup these days. Birds, let's talk about birds. Well, dispersants strip oil. It's stripping the natural oils off of feathers. It's stripping the natural oils off of everything. The real question that people strangely weren't focusing on was what happens when you mix these two chemicals. So now they're finding that the mixture of the chemicals creates a substance that up to, up to 52 times more toxic than the oil. A decade later, the oil spill is still causing health and environmental concerns. The worst concerns I have about exposure down there now are when the hurricanes come, they stir up deeper into the water column and they pull up everything that sort of got deposited in the impacted zone. And that is still coming ashore. When it gets stirred up, it also goes back up into the air again. So there's a lot of repeated exposures. The problem with that is once your body gets exposed to these chemicals, your body recognizes when it's in a dangerous situation. So it learns, oh my God, this is really bad for me. And so you overreact the next time um, that you're exposed. And this exact same chemical spill response plan is the plan, pre-approved. Right, so if this was to happen again, this same plan is in, it is like ready to go. It's going to go, yeah. With no public comment, no consultation, no notification. So if you live in a coastal community where there's offshore oil now or in the future, there's a spill, the planes will be flying 
and they're not going to ask you and they're not going to tell you. They're not going to need permission. They're just going to do it.